G'day, g'day, g'day. I'm Sam from Benigo Vinyl. Now, I was sitting at work at the counter the other day. Right here, actually. Dude walks in about 45 to 65, and I know exactly what he's going to ask me before he even gets here. Do you guys sell any secondhand records? So I tell him what I tell anyone. No, not at the moment. No secondhand records. Now, why don't we sell any secondhand records here at Benigo Vinyl at the moment? That's a story for another time and another video. But suffice to say, it wasn't the answer he wanted. Now, nine times out of 10, that's where this conversation ends. But on this occasion, nah, I can't listen to any new records. They sound awful. Not like the old stuff. This frustrated me so much. I did a big rant on Instagram, but I thought it might be the sort of thing where it could use a video. So here is why your secondhand records are rubbish. Now, a quick disclaimer, some old records are rubbish. Some new records are rubbish too, but the blanket statement that all new records are rubbish and that the only way to listen to records is the originals is just a ridiculous statement. But why is it ridiculous? Well, in true YouTube fashion, I'm gonna give you four reasons. Number one, the science. Now, back in the day when vinyl was king, there were plants everywhere and they were churning out vinyl at breakneck speeds. And like with anything, when you make a lot of it and you make it very quickly, there are quality control issues. Not every piece of plastic that was printed in the 70s is a golden audio experience. Firstly, the weight. So many of those original 12 inch records were pressed between 90 grams and 120 grams. That's really, really thin. And why does that matter? Because the heavier the record is, the better it plays. It tracks better on the turntable and it improves sound quality. Now, the grooves are more stable within the wax. And then when the stylus is tracking along the wax, it has an easier time with things that have wide stereo content or lots of bass. The stylus won't jump out of those grooves as easily. A lot of collectors really, really covered Japanese imports from the 70s and the 80s because a lot of those were pressed on those heavier weight vinyl, 180, 200 grams. The good news is so many of the new records now are on 180 grams or heavier. Now, does that mean that if it's less than 180 grams, you're gonna get a bad record? Not necessarily. And does it mean every 180 gram record is gonna be fantastic? No, it doesn't mean that either. But the heavier the record is, the more chance that you're gonna get a faithful representation of the sound. Now, as much as digital audio technology is a real point of contention with vinyl enthusiasts, there's no disputing that audio technology has come a long, long way since those original records were pressed in the golden era of recording of the 60s and the 70s. Now, a lot of the stuff, the limitations that these bands and artists had back in the day, where it was rushed mixing and mastering times, rushed record recording times to get things out by a deadline. A lot of that can be looked at now with some of this modern audio technology. I was so excited by Giles Martin's remix of the Beatles' Revolver last year, and we finally, using some of that audio technology, got the first true stereo mix of one of the greatest albums of all time. You know what hasn't gotten better over the years? Nearly every piece of black plastic that's been kept in a hot garage for 50 years. Vinyl is a format you have to take really, really good care of. Not much of it gets out unscathed. Now, especially if you're playing it, and it should be played, you're gonna wear it down even quicker. Number two, new music. If you're only listening to old original records, you're cutting yourself off to so much amazing new music. Let's use 1988 as an example. Until last year in 2022, 1988 was the last year that vinyl outsold CDs. Now, if we say 1988 was the point where Mr. New Vinyl Sucks jumped off the audio ship, he's missed out on a boatload of amazing new music. Nirvana, Radiohead, Jeff Buckley, Bjork, Aphex Twin. That's, there's so many amazing, amazing artists that have released music since 1988 and he's not hearing any of them. Plus the best of new artists today. What a miserable experience to miss out on so much new, really, really great music because you only listen to original stuff from before 1988 and that's the only way. Number three, gatekeeping. I think the one that makes me the most upset is this one because it's altogether too common. Old guy comes in and he tells you that new stuff is crap and original is the only way to listen to it. So when you buy the records that you can afford, and not the originals that are up for an exorbitant price on Discogs, you feel crap about your purchase. And you should never ever have to feel crap about anything that you buy that's music related. You love it, that's what's the most important. So when you listen to your new copy of Rumours, which sounds phenomenal by the way, and he tries to tell you that he's better than you because he has a copy from 1977 with a faded sleeve and it sounds way better, it's just not true. 
you should never feel bad about the music you buy. That's your vinyl now, and you should have an amazing time listening to it. Listen to vinyl, don't listen to idiots. Number four, supporting artists. You know who makes money selling secondhand records? Me, the store, and that's it. Recycling is great, and with so many things out of print, secondhand is such a great option for picking up some classics or some rarer, hard to find stuff at a really, really great price. But it doesn't support the artists, unfortunately. And if that's something that's important to you, and I think it probably should be, given the awful payouts that streaming pays musicians and artists, then buying new vinyl is a great way to do that. You know what you can't get from back in the day? The new Gang of Use album that was released like last year. Hey look, an original pressing. Look, in summary, it's not a binary choice. The guy came in and he said, old records are the only way. All new records are rubbish. That's not true. There are some new records that are rubbish. There are some old records that are rubbish. There's rubbish everywhere, but there's more good stuff everywhere as well. And I think a healthy collection has a bit of both, a bit of secondhand and a bit of new. New to support artists, new to listen to new exciting music and old stuff because there is a bit of fun there, digging through a crate and finding something that you can't find anywhere else. But I'd love to hear from you if you only listen to old vinyl. Comment below what gets you up and going about it. Why do you love secondhand vinyl so much? And I'll see you when you flip the side.